All right, many students are comfortable comparing two sets of data using the mean. That's where we add up all the numbers and divide by how many there are. And you can tell, you know, if you're talking about grades, um, which class has uh, higher grades, you know, based on the mean. But there's more to data than just the middle. Um, there's more than just the mean or even the median. We need to consider um, how consistent the data is. In other words, we need to consider um, how close the values are to the mean and or how spread out, how much variation there is. All right, some classes um, are, you know, what are we talking about? In this particular problem, we're talking about temperature. So you can imagine one city where the temperatures remain um, very normalized. Uh, the temperatures don't vary a lot from, uh, you know, over the months. Um, but then you can picture another city where it has extreme highs and extreme lows. In both cases, the average temperature could be uh, close to the same. But if you're living in those cities, your life, your experience will be very different if you're living somewhere where the uh, temperatures vary greatly versus where the temperatures are more moderate. Um, so the mean does not tell you everything. We need something else. We need standard deviation to help us know um, are the temperatures varying gradually or are the temperatures varying wildly. Okay, um, so in this lesson we are going to calculate standard deviation by hand. I mean the, cal the calculator will find the standard deviation for us um, but and I will show you how to do that in another lesson. But before you can use a calculator you really need to understand what the calculator is doing so we will do it by hand. I think the easiest way to calculate standard deviation is um, to use a chart. So I'm going to make a three column chart for each one of these uh, sets of data. Okay, so here I'm setting up my two charts to help me calculate the standard deviation um, for both cities. Um, three columns the first column is going to just be the data itself. So I've just copied these numbers into the first column. Now, in the second column, um, we need the differences from the mean. So that means we're going to need the mean for both of these. So our next move is to go ahead and calculate the mean of all this data. Um, remember that the mean, that's where we add them all up and divide by how many there are. Okay, um, this is a 15 day period, so we're looking at 15 numbers. So let's add up all these numbers and divide by 15, and that will be the mean. We'll do that for both cities. All right, for city A, the mean, and the symbol for mean is X bar, the mean turned out to be 33.4. All right, so that was the mean temperature, the mean high temperature for this city. Okay, um, so now we're supposed to, for the middle column, uh, we're supposed to find the differences between the data and the mean. So for each number, we're going to take this number and subtract the mean. So we have to do 36 minus 33.4, 37 minus 33.4 and so on, and that's how we get the middle column. So these are the differences that you get if you subtract the mean from each one of these data elements. All right, for the third column, we're supposed to take um, these differences and square them. Uh, please understand that all of these values in the third column should be positive. A negative times a negative is a positive. So if you square these, they should be positive. If you're using a calculator um, and you want to type in negative 3.4 squared, you have to be careful to put it in parentheses. Okay, just want to make this clear. If I type in negative 3.4 squared like this, it's going to give me a negative number even though we know this is supposed to be a positive number. Okay, so 
you can either just type in 3.4 squared just knowing that it's going to be positive or you can put the whole thing in parentheses negative 3.4 parentheses squared and then your calculator will, will square including the negative sign so just be aware of that um, all of these numbers should be positive so I'm going to go ahead and square all these and write them here so these are the values that we get when we square all the differences so we're down to the last two steps of finding the standard deviation um, the next thing is we need to find the mean of these squares so we need to add up all of these numbers and uh, divide by 15 okay so I'm gonna find the mean of these guys all right and then I'll take the square root of that and then that'll be my standard deviation but for right now I need the mean of these squares all right so I'm just gonna write here mean of squares and let's see what that is that turns out to be 6.8 okay 6.8 is the mean of the third column um, and so the last step if I want to find the standard deviation is to take the square root of this I didn't leave myself any space okay so here's the bottom line we took the mean of all the squares and that turned out to be 6.8 and then the standard deviation is just the square root of that. So the square root of 6.8 gives us 2.6. So that is the standard deviation. Um, you know what? I should mention the symbol for standard deviation. And there it is. Um, the symbol for standard deviation is this lowercase sigma. And so standard deviation sigma equals the square root of our 6.8, which is 2.6. All right, so that's the standard deviation for the first city. So we need to do the exact same thing for city B. And uh, just to give you a heads up, um, whichever one of these has the highest standard deviation, that will indicate that there are more highs and lows in those temperatures okay more variation whoever has the lower standard deviation means that that city has more consistent temperatures um, with fewer highs and lows all right let's go ahead and do city B all right um, first we need to find the mean of the data so it's like we found the 33.4 before so let's find the mean of the first column here all right, for city B, the mean temperature during this 15-day period is 33.5. So practically the same temperature uh, as city A. So if the only thing we were going by was the mean, we would say these two cities are basically the same. Um, but that's not the full story. Let's look at the standard deviation and see if there's a difference in the consistency of the temperatures. All right, so now that we have the mean, it's time to find the middle column by doing each data element minus the mean. So 41 minus 33.5, 35 minus 33.5, and so on. So these are the values you should be getting for the middle column. Now, of course, for the third column, we are going to take all these differences and square them. Don't forget these should all be positive. So these are the values you should be getting in the third column if you square all the differences. All right, so we're almost done. Now we find the mean of all these squares. So I'm just going to take all of these squares that I just found, and I'm going to add them up and divide by 15, because that's how many there are. And whatever I get, I'm going to put that right here because that'll be the mean of all the squares. And then we'll just take the square root of that and that'll be my standard deviation. All right, so 
When you take the uh, mean of all these squares, you get 23.3166, etc. I rounded it here a little. Um, but if you take the square root of that, that's your standard deviation. Go ahead and zoom in. Okay, so there, the standard deviation is the square root of this number, which turns out to be approximately 4.8. All right, so it's comparison time. All right, uh, for city A, the standard deviation was 2.6. For city B, the standard deviation of temperatures was 4.8 degrees. So, which city had more variation in the temperatures? City B. City B with the higher standard deviation had more variation. Okay, higher highs and lower lows, more changing of the temperatures. Uh, which city was more consistent, closer to the same all the time? Well, obviously that would be city A. Uh, a lower standard deviation means that the data is more consistent, more even, closer to the same all the time, closer to the median, closer to the mean. Okay, um, and so now we just need to write that up into a sentence or a couple of sentences and for our summary statement, and then we will be done. All right, so we could summarize our information like this. I went ahead and recorded all the information on this little chart. You should do the same, just for easy reference as we compose our summary statement. Um, you really are gonna want your summary statement to be as close to what I'm showing you here as possible. This is a good model for you because uh, we're supposed to compare based on the mean and based on the standard deviation. So uh, there are going to be two sentences for the mean and two sentences for the standard deviation. So here we go. The mean temperature for both cities is virtually the same. 33.4 versus 33.5. Notice how I mention uh, the numbers here. That means that both cities tend to be equally cold. Okay, sort of uh, the second sentence tells me what it means, the significance of the, uh, the means being the same. All right, it means that the, the temperature is about the same overall in both cities. And then um, now we're gonna talk about standard deviation. However, city B temperatures have a higher standard deviation 4.83 versus 2.60. This means that the temperature in city B varies more from day to day. Okay, alternatively, I could have said um, something about a city A having a lower standard deviation, like this. So I could have phrased it this way. However, city A temperatures have a lower standard deviation 2.60 versus 4.83. This means that the temperatures in city A are more consistent. That means they're closer to the same. All right, either way is fine. Um, you should be able to understand and recognize both. Let me emphasize one more thing before I end this video. Um, a common mistake that students will make when you're describing standard deviation. Some students will say things like, city B has a higher standard deviation. Okay, or city A has a lower standard deviation. The kids will say things like um, city B has more variation. A city cannot have more variation. A city cannot have a higher standard deviation. Data has variation. Data has a standard deviation. So the key word that you're missing is a word that's going to change depending on what the problem is about. Um, you have to mention a word that shows what the data is that you're talking about. City B has a lot going for it. It has temperatures, it has rainfall, it has population, it has pollution. There's a lot of data in City B. So you can't just say City B because we don't know what you're talking about. You have to say the City B temperatures have a higher standard deviation. Um, you have to say the temperature in city B varies more from day to day. Don't just say city B 
has more variation. Okay? If we were talking about rainfall, you would say city B um, rainfall has more variation, and so on. All right. Um, that's the bell, the end of my planning period, but I was just wrapping up this video anyway. So that'll do it for us, and uh, I will see you on the next video. I hope it was helpful for you.